Hey guys, today's video is one that I am looking forward to because it's everything to do with laser hair removal. Laser hair removal, especially in the last few years, has just exploded into the market, but it's also confusing the different options out there. I've got an expert who's agreed to come back to talk to me about laser hair removal and that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Would you mind just telling us a little bit about who you are and what's going on with you? Hi. Hi everyone. So I'm an, a specialist in permanent hair removal. I've been in the field for 17, 18 years now. Um, I spend about 10, 10 years in central London working for um, the big names in laser uh, hair removal and aesthetics. And in the last few years, I'm working out of a small practice, just focusing on electrolysis and helping people who can't be helped with laser. I'm gonna really just start from the beginning, which is what is laser hair removal? What does it actually mean? Okay, so with, um, we need to define, first of all, what we're targeting. Um, and it's a little bit sciencey, but the hair itself is a dead structure. Um, we're not trying to treat the hair. We're trying to reach the root. In the root of the hair, there are stem cells that, that govern the process of the hair growing and falling and resting and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so for us to, to disable the follicles of growing any more hair, yeah. we need to be able to neutralize somehow these cells and we do it by using heat. Mm -hmm. In electrolysis, we deliver the heat directly into the hair follicle with a probe and with laser, we use a little bit more of a clever method to do that. Right. Um, we use light. Um, and the trick here is that there are these structures in our skin that have the magic ability to um, absorb light and turn it into heat. And that's why we feel warmth when sunlight shines on us because some of the rays in the sunlight yes. is the type that our skin can absorb and turn into warmth and warm us up. Oh. Um, but scientists found out that um, different structures absorb light differently and the color in the skin and in the hair, because it's the same molecule basically that, uh, or the same structure that gives us the color in the skin and in the hair, absorbs particular wavelengths of light extremely well um, and, and much more than the other structures in the skin. So they exploited that with creating laser machines at those wavelengths where that light will be absorbed in the pigment that's prevalent in the hair root, which will then turn it into heat and the hair root will heat up the area around it where the stem cells are. And that's how we achieve killing the hair roots right. with laser light. And this is also why it is very important that there is a difference in the color of the hair and in the skin Mm -hmm. in order for us to deliver enough energy to to kill the hair root. Mm -hmm. So, um, as I said, the scientists looked at different wavelengths of light and mm -hmm. they um, observed how this is absorbed in the skin and in the hair. Mm -hmm. And they uh, identified a few different wavelengths. And, and that's why we have three particular lasers that are used for hair removal because they have the best absorption in the pigment. And one of those is called um, NDAG uh, mm. laser, mm -hmm. which is the laser that's suitable for darker skin. And the reason for it being suitable for darker skin is that it's not that aggressive to pigment, mm -hmm. but at the same time in darker skin, you have a lot more of pigment concentrated in the hair follicles, in the skin as well, but in the hair follicles. Um, but the combination of the three, these three factors makes it possible to carry out uh, laser treatments, successful laser treatments on darker skins. Which areas is laser hair removal best for? So the best areas to have laser hair removal would be the areas in which you have the thickest, coarsest hairs. Um, and if you think body-wise, you would have thickest hairs on the lower parts of the extremities, um, arms and legs, 
-hmm. and on the bikini line and on the underarms. These are all the areas that kind of develop as secondary sex characteristics during puberty. Yeah. Um, so those areas usually work really well with laser hair removal. Um, in men, um, some chests and some back um, and also the beard area, which is actually a very common area to be asked for in um, black skinned men because they suffer with ingrown hairs greatly. And the only way to deal with that irritation is removing the hair with a permanent method of hair removal. And laser usually is the easier option to do. How long do the effects of laser hair removal then last for? Again, there is a bit of a play with words legally in terms of what permanency means. Mm. And funnily enough, permanency uh, in legal terms means effects that last longer than a year. Um, <laughs> yeah, just a year, which is not fair. Um, but yes, if the treatment's carried out correctly, if people are treated to, on the optimum setting, um, high enough to kill the hair, mm. they will normally be seeing the hair is casting out. That means the hairs are shedding two to three weeks after the laser treatment and they get less and less hair. Over the course of a period uh, of 12 months, most of the hair should be gone and it should never come back. Now, how quickly can people notice the difference? You actually notice it pretty much after the first treatment. So on the body, about six to eight weeks. Now, some areas that are very heavy growth might take two or three treatments before people see the area staying like completely clearing after the treatment and staying clear for a while. So how many sessions then would you suggest is enough? Typically I've seen, you know, people recommend six sessions, eight sessions, which, you know, what would you say is the ideal number of sessions that you would need? Okay, so the number of sessions is dependent on the case we're dealing with. Um, the first distinct, uh, the first difference would be, are we treating body areas or facial areas? The most aggressive hair growth we have on our bodies is on our face. We have the most, the highest number of hair fat follicles per square centimeter. So that means more treatment. Mm -hmm. And the hair also grows much faster, so the cycles are shorter. Mm -hmm. That's why on the face, we have to treat every four to six weeks yeah. with laser. And that means a higher number of sessions to cover the 12 months. So people with heavier growth like hirsutism and hormonal problems or men, because they have so much testosterone in their system, we will probably extend that to a year and a half realistically and need to do up to 12 sessions on the face. So what happens then if you were to decide to take a break in between treatments? The problem with leaving longer periods of time in between treatments is that the hair will grow into the resting stage and it, the laser session, the first laser session won't be effective. Right. So you're kind of um, missing a cycle and you would need to wait for that, that hair to grow through again in a few months time to treat it again in order to kill it. But the first treatment on this sort of hair will just not be efficient. Okay. So what's the kind of reasonable gap that, you know, you can, one can reasonably <laughs> try and get away with then? Um, up to about 10 weeks on the body is relatively safe. Um, on the face, it's, it's shorter. Um, anything post eight weeks might not be, okay. um, yeah, might not be a good, idea to leave not ideal in the first six um uh, in the first 12 months of treatment really not ideal i don't just yeah. it, it's really worth it to commit i've also had um other people that have had laser hair removal and they've not really had the results that they were after and for some people they've not noticed any change what kind of things would make it not effective well, for us to actually kill the stem cells in the hair root, we need to heat up the hair follicle to 70 degrees over one millisecond. If we don't achieve that heating up, we're not going to kill the hair root. The reasons why might, that might happen are a few. In the first place, 
it's either the wrong laser or too low of a setting that is being used on this person. One thing that people need to know and look for is that the hair must cast two to three weeks post-treatment. If the hair is not falling out two to three weeks post-treatment, then the treatment's not being done efficiently and they're just wasting their money. You have to have a chest patch first mm -hmm. on the actual area, not on another area, on the actual area that will be treated that will choose the highest setting that can be used on on the on the per, on you you know on the client mm -hmm. without burning the skin so we want to treat just at that border line between effectiveness and safety <laughs> in order to get the results mm -hmm. that's the way to do it mm -hmm. so you want to have a few consultations reputable clinic someone who's got years experience and they have good technology. So is there a chance though that for some people, you know, that the hair can actually grow back thicker as a result of laser hair removal? Unfortunately, yes, there is that um, risk as well. It's called paradoxical hypertrichosis. Um, it, it is, the risk is higher in particular ethnic groups and in particular areas. So women of, um, Asian skin type or darker and that on the face or upper shoulders mm -hmm. or torso or upper thighs and buttocks mm -hmm. if there is a mixture of fine and, and thicker hairs or just fine hairs and they get treated by laser they very often um, get stimulated so instead of getting rid of the hair the hair will start growing more it will spread out especially on the faces we often see this area treated mm -hmm. and we ending up with all this fluff stimulated into visible mm -hmm. hair growth that um, unfortunately many people think well if it gets thicker then laser is going to work even better on it and unfortunately no it won't mm -hmm. it doesn't touch it at all the only way to get rid of that hair growth is electrolysis so be aware, women do not have laser on your faces. It's just too risky. Honestly, I have seen so many people, you know, I watch all these YouTubers and people who are going to clinics and they're wanting to have facial hair removed. And each time, I mean, I guess maybe before I met you, I wouldn't know any better either. But after, you know, speaking to you, I just cringe because especially if it's due to, you know, PCOS or any other hormonal yeah. issue, I just feel like, you know, laser hair removal on the face doesn't really work. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah. Um, it's very rare that I get to treat people nowadays who haven't already have had laser. Mm -hmm. And I have some cases that are so, have had such bad side effects that have started with barely anything. They should have never been touched with laser because they just literally had a few tiny bits here and there mm -hmm. and ended up having the whole area treated mm -hmm. because the offer in the clinic yeah was for lower face mm -hmm. and they got to do the whole lower face it's like uh you know they got a win-win situation where yeah. they got to treat the whole lower face and hopefully get rid of some of the fluff but ended up with fully grown beards that just completely ruined their lives mm -hmm. um there are actually a very famous youtube uh, not youtuber instagrammer i think called stay away from laser so people can look her story up because she's posted her pictures of the hair she ended up with after laser. It's completely ruined her life. Yeah, I think laser has been a tool for the better and it's transformed a lot of women and men's lives that have been dealing with troublesome hair. But I think it's not a cure-all and you need to make sure that when you are going to see somebody that the person is able to actually look at the area that's in question and suggest the right treatment rather than just trying to buy you in into multiple offers and i think that's where a lot of people fall into that into the trap because you go on groupon tons of you know hair removal voucher all these other providers and a lot of women end up coming back and it's the opposite and that's a real shame so i just really want to say to any woman that's watching this video you know really make sure that you speak to somebody that's really knowledgeable and if it is that you're struggling with hair removal on your face really think about electrolysis 
because it does that's the one thing that i would recommend i guess now i'm going to ask a couple of questions about you know the practicalities of laser so kind of do's and don'ts before you have your appointment how should you prepare okay so laser is a heat treatment and we want the skin to be calm and happy before um, the treatments carried out so we suggest that the shaving of the hair is done the night before or if your appointment's later on the day you can do it on the morning before uh, the laser procedure but really we don't want to have any hair on the surface of the skin and i know that some places recommend that you do it a couple of days sometimes before treatment and that's completely wrong because if you if there's any hair on the surface of the skin lasers traveling from the top down it will hit that hair that's on the surface of the skin first and and whatever's left from the energy will penetrate further down you really don't want anything burning on the surface of the skin we need all the heat travel in the skin and just affect the hair root not the surface of the skin i've seen pretty nasty um, topical skin burns because the hair was left on the surface um, no other hair removal methods are allowed, like waxing or uh, plucking, because we need to have that part of the hair inside the hair follicle to absorb the energy. Sun exposure is an important one. If the skin's um, melanocytes or the cells that produce pigment are excited and we get to hit them with light, um, we're risking severe burns. There are actually places that claim that uh, it, they're perfectly safe to treat uh, tan skin. And these are usually places that have NDA lasers. Mm -hmm. And it's true, they can treat it safely, but not effectively, because the way that's done is you turn the energy right down. It's perfectly safe, but it doesn't kill the hair. Um, and also avoid any vigorous exfoliation or brushing of the skin just 24 hours or 14 hours actually before the treatment because we don't want the skin overstimulated. For the first 24 hours, it's most important that we allow the skin to cool down. And the best way to do it is uh, wear loose clothing and apply lots of aloe vera. If it's on the face, avoid makeup for 24 hours. If it's underarms, no antiperspirants. The rule is keep your skin cool, clean and dry and you will be fine. I've just come up with this question as we've been talking and it was just if somebody had had, you know, a package of hair removal from somewhere else and they weren't really noticing any results, is it still worth them maybe going back to somebody else that's more you know, experience to have a further lot of um, laser hair removal? I guess it depends what the reason was for them not getting the results. Mm -hmm. Was the hair shedding? If the, the hair never shed after treatment, then they weren't treated on, the, or either they weren't treated on a high enough setting, mm -hmm. or the hair is not suitable for laser. So if, if they feel that they were never treated efficiently that they were not on the right laser and there is one particular laser who accounts for maybe 80 90 percent of the lasers around the country that is amazing in terms of marketing strategy but in terms of results is really poor and on dark skin completely useless oh, and that is the one that's marketed as the painless laser but painless also means no results, no pain, no gain, I'm afraid. So if they've had that particular laser, I'd strongly advise them to look for an NDAG laser if we're talking about darker skins and have a test patch there. If you have a test patch, you can judge by what's going to happen to the test patch two, three weeks later, whether it's different to what you observed before. And, and then you can draw a conclusion whether it's worth trying this or not. Then the last major thing I wanted to talk about was this recent explosion of these home laser kits and home devices. Do you think they're worth it? I have seen girls that report that it helps them. Now, I don't know how much um, that is. I, I, I can't compare to what that would be, you know, with a professional machine. Mm -hmm. But if someone finds help temporary, it could be all that someone can afford at the moment. Now, these machines are severely underpowered um, in order to be safe to use at home. Also, professional laser treatments are carried out in special rooms that are completely blacked out because if you 
if you were to shoot the laser through the window uh, by mistake, by accident, you can blind someone outside or in another building. Um, and professional machines can't exterminate all hair growth. So what's left for home, home machines? They're just much less powerful than a professional machine. Maybe they can keep the, the hair away for a little bit longer and allow some people to have less irritation from their hair removal methods, but for permanency, I, I really, I can't see it. I guess the next main question is really for anybody that's interested to kind of contact you further or find out about electrolysis, which is your main work and your main caseload. Can you just tell us more about how to get in touch with you then, Jerry? Well, um, I've got a practice in uh, on the border of East London, Essex. I'm more than happy to answer people's questions on laser. Um, I do know a few of my old colleagues that work around London and Essex. So if, if someone is that area, I'm more than happy to point them to a place where I know that they're going to get the best um, treatment with laser. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, yeah, I'm sure that you're going to link below okay. my um, website or my social media. Don't worry, I have you covered. I will be putting all the links below. And yes, Jerry is very helpful when it comes to answering questions. She's a wealth of knowledge, so feel free to reach out to her and she'll be more than happy to help. If you made it to the end of this video, then I hope you found it really helpful and I hope it's answered some of your questions about laser hair removal. If it has, then I would love it if you liked this video by giving it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel because I've got more content to do with health, wellness, beauty, skincare, basically anything that allows you to achieve your ultimate glow up. So you don't want to miss it and I will see you next time.